as the white snow glistens and even melts outside our windows, we witness the power and the presence of God. Welcome to our worship service, where through word and table, we uplift our creator God with praise and thanksgiving. Let us pray. We gather as a community of God's people to draw near to one another in fellowship with God, to praise the one who has cared for us this day, and to feed upon God's word, our sustenance for life. O God, our guardian and helper, give us refuge in the shadow of your wings. Amen. Heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. Yet their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In the heavens he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom from his wedding canopy, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them, and nothing is hid from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinance of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them there, there is great reward. But who can detect their errors? Clear me from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from the insolent. Do not let them have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Creation and theology come together in nearly every aspect of our lives. Our knowledge of God comes to us through different channels. Scientific discovery is one form. Natural revelation is another. Written text, yet another. And certainly we encounter God through the wonders of creation. 
The psalmist gazes at the beauty of creation and unquestionably utters praise to God, the sovereign author of it all. This praise offering comes from a truth born of faith, faith that affirms the reality of God. Science itself will never be able to tell us, based on empirical evidence, that there is a God or there is not a God. Only faith can make such a declaration. The how questions are for science. The why questions are for faith. In the midst of this dichotomy, creation speaks for itself. The stars, for example, speak of a scope and a size to the universe that are beyond our grasp. The mountains give hint of a maker more powerful than our comprehension. The colors found in a single autumn day display an artistry unmatched by the most skilled human hands. And as we await that first crocus appearing when the snow actually goes away, we delight in renewed evidence of our creator God. The psalmist, David, reminds us that the heavens are telling of the glory of God. God's creation indeed speaks, and we are to pay attention to what it is saying. Whenever we truly encounter and open ourselves to creation, a proclamation takes place. There is a declaration that surpasses the boundaries of language and says something to the soul. When we walk by faith and by sight, celebrating the creation all around us, we can actively listen for God's voice speaking through incomparable handiwork. This psalm promises that we can experience the following results through creation's communication with us. It will revive the soul. It will make wise the simple. It will rejoice the heart, enlighten the eyes, endure forever. Christians are free to explore all the glories of the natural world using the tools of science for learning and more complete understanding. We can join with the psalmist who rejoices in the wonders of creation with the awareness that such wonders are not diminished by the work of science. They are illuminated. The gleanings of scientific study of God's creation reveal yet another truth. The created world is in ongoing need of our intentional care. We must renew our commitment to justice toward God's earth, our home. We must actively take responsibility for its sustenance and not only appreciate God and benefit spiritually through creation's beauty, but commit to learning what we can seek and do for justice for God's planet as God's people. Celebrate creation. 
And remember, it is God's gift entrusted to our care. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of the universe, we praise you for your creation, for the wonder of space, the beauty of the world, and the value of Earth's resources. Keep us from spoiling these gifts by our selfishness. Help us to listen for your voice as you speak through that which you have created for our pleasure and renewal. Healing God, be with all who struggle in mind, body, or spirit. Heal our world through your presence, through each of us, we pray. Amen.
Christ, the host of every sacred meal, invites us to gather around the table. It is here that we ask God to shake us out of our easy ways, that we may repent and take positive steps in our witness, in word and deed. Through these gifts, may God lead us to help to renew the face of the earth. For I receive from the Lord that which I also give unto you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. Let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us unite our hearts in a prayer of thanksgiving. Creating God, may the life of our Savior Jesus Christ, which we have received at this table, give us the energy and vitality that we need. Help us use this new life in all that we do and say, so that the new world of justice and joy will come. Through Jesus Christ we pray, amen.
thank you to Cody and Josh for reading our scripture for us. The blessing of technology enables us to continue to worship together while they now reside in New Jersey. We miss you both, and it is good to see you and hear your voices. During this season of Lent, we encourage each of us to use the Lenten guide and the bookmark that we have received through the mail. Lent is to be a season of reflection upon all that God has given for our spiritual benefit. We remind you that the annual flower sale has begun. We can once again order flowers, veggies, herbs, and hanging baskets through Sunday, April 11th. Please look for specific information in the March newsletter on our website, and on a special email from the church office. This year's proceeds will go toward the creation of a meditation garden in the area of the former Children's Cross. And now for our benediction. Glory be to you, O God, creator of all that is good. Great and marvelous are your works. Just and true are your ways. Let us live as recipients of your love and your grace. Amen.